Our last few videos were on homebrewing and glassware, and while all that history is fine and dandy, as a true nerd I sometimes need more science. So put on your best beer nerd glasses because today we're upping our beer nerd cred and examining the attenuation process in brewing. Hello beer nerds, this is Beer by the Numbers. Whenever brewers and home brewers alike measure the gravities of their beer with a hydrometer, they're trying to measure what physicists call attenuation. Today we're taking a deep dive into the world of attenuation and seeing how it interacts with the brewing process. Let's get started. In physics, attenuation is the gradual loss in intensity of any kind of flux through a medium. Now, when I first read this definition, I was a little intimidated, but there's plenty of examples of attenuation in our daily life. Light fades the intensity of old newspapers, sunglasses fade over time, and even earthquakes attenuate as the seismic waves radiate from the epicenter. So when we look for a process of attenuation, we need not look any further than the most important process in brewing, fermentation. In fact, attenuation is simply a measure of how much a beer has fermented, but to understand attenuation, we have to look at the brewing process using this handy dandy chart I found on the internet. We start with the grist, which, for those that don't know, are the grains that have been prepared to turn into beer, and then the brewer begins the mashing process. Mashing is the brewing term for steeping the grains in hot water, which hydrates the grains, activates the malt enzymes, and converts grain starches into fermentable sugars. This process changes grist into a mixture of various compounds whose ratios largely depend on the type of malt used and the mashing conditions. But we're looking at a mixture of just five things. Fermentable sugars, dextrins, better known as carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals, and spent grains. Once the conversion from wet grains to sweet wort is complete, the wort is separated from the spent grains in the lautering process. Inefficiencies in this process generally causes some of the sugars and other compounds to be thrown out along with the spent grains, which is why brewers try to minimize this loss by measuring the efficiency of their lautering process accordingly. This is usually the first efficiency measure in the brewing process, but to get to attenuation we need to keep going. The wort is then boiled and hops are added. Once all the additions are complete and have had enough time to break down properly, the wort is cooled, transferred to a fermenter, and yeast is added. It's at this point the brewer will usually take a gravity reading using a hydrometer to have a baseline to compare against after fermentation. For those that don't know, gravity is a measure of how dense a liquid is versus pure water. The denser the liquid, the more dissolved solids are in the wort. Here's where our attenuation magic happens. The yeasts begin to consume all of those fermentable sugars in the wort, and they produce equal parts CO2 and ethanol, better known by its generic name alcohol, as well as a few other compounds like esters and even some higher alcohols. The yeast will absorb most of the simple proteins and nutrients, but not all of the fermentable sugars may have been fermented at the time the beer is finished and consumed. The amount of fermentable sugars left in the beer has an effect on the beer character and different styles of beer oftentimes have different amounts of fermentable sugars left in them. The brewer will now take a final gravity reading which, along with their original gravity reading and a handy formula, can be used to calculate attenuation, which also gives the brewer an idea of a very important aspect of the beer, alcohol by volume. However, this is only a close approximation to the true attenuation of the beer. To measure the true attenuation, you need a spectrometer, or more commonly in the brewing community, an ultrasound. No, not that kind of ultrasound. Bouncing sound waves through your brew before and after fermentation is the absolute best way to measure how things have changed. There are limits to attenuation in beer, however. Ale yeast are only able to process so much of the sugars dissolved in beer. Certain sugar compounds like raffinose and melibose can only be partially processed and have some leftover compounds in the final beer. Lager yeast, as far as researchers have been able to determine, can ferment these compounds, but due to imperfect fermentation conditions, likely won't get every single molecule. 
Raffinose and Melibose are only a very, very small percentage of the sugars present in the beer, so researchers are pretty sure that the difference in the ability to process these sugars plays an insignificant role in which yeast to choose, especially when compared to all the other ways ales and lagers differ. But that's another video. Anyway, although attenuation has a pretty simple definition, it's a complex measurement for an even more complex process when applied to brewing. So the next time your beer nerd friends get together, wow them with your impressive knowledge of attenuation. If you like this video, share it with a beer nerd in your life. That way you'll both be smarter drinkers. And if you want to be alerted each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as David Wallace once said, fermentation may have been a better invention than fire.